All right. Do you, are you familiar with those attacks? Uh, well, the... that's one type of attack. And uh, actually, there are two elements here. There's atheism and there's uh, how do Muslims prove Muhammad existed? So then, in effect, that's kind of two questions. Because a person could be atheist and not uh, disagree with the history of Muhammad Sallallahu existence. Mm -hmm. uh, or a person could also not be an atheist and question the existence of the Prophet, uh, or a person could do both. So they're, they're not, you know, these are modalities that aren't necessarily, uh, they don't have to be teamed together necessarily. Um, I, let's say, so let me answer these as two pieces. Uh, as far as atheism goes, my response to it would be like this. Atheism is a faith. Atheism falls into what I regard as the field of a religion. Now, some Muslims, of course, would oppose that and would say, oh no, a, a religion can't be uh, consist of uh, atheism or, or uh, shirk. It has to be one of the religions. So like when I was speaking with Muhammad al-Akhal Shurafa, the uh, Algerian alim, and I he saw from my card that I was the chair of the Department of Religion at Temple University, which in Arabic is Department of Religions, Dianet, uh, he said, and what would those religions be, Professor Khaled? <laughs> Everyone knows there are only three religions, which be, would be Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, of course. Uh, and that is one way of looking at, at it. And if we look at it as a, a deen, I would say, okay. But the way the Western term religion is constructed, it has been constructed as something that is used in polemical uh, uh, dichotomies against religion to exclude ethics from public discourse and exclude religious belief from public discourse. So you have these dichotomies, uh, secularism good, religion bad, science good, religion bad. And so in that kind of sense, to come back with a definition of then what is religion exactly, when they are trying to portray their own beliefs as good and the beliefs of others who oppose the prevailing statist and materialist ideology as bad, my response to that is to say, your ideology is just as much an ideology as anybody else's. It is also a belief on faith, in fact, because how does an atheist know anything about God not existing? I mean, obviously, the whole universe could have been created in a very deterministic way uh, by God. And there isn't any way of disproving that. It's a possibility. And, of course, it maybe isn't something that can be proven and cannot be disproven either in terms of Western rationalistic logic and such things. That is why the preferred Western position is agnosticism, which is just saying, I don't know, and to duck the whole question and to try to evade rather than to polemically attack religious belief. And definitely polemical attacks are more dangerous for us than uh, simply people ignoring religion uh, would be. So the um, uh, New so-called new atheists, who have in their number uh, people such as the uh, extreme anti-Muslim polemicist Sam Harris, or the uh, uh, former scientist and uh, polemicist and anti-religious activist Richard Dawkins, who has moved from being anti-Christian to being anti-Muslim where he's still anti-Christian, but he's also anti-Muslim and has put more emphasis on that of late. Um, and all of the uh, scientific paraphernalia that they bring along to try to prove their position. Uh, this is frankly just uh, a another type of belief. So Richard Dawkins' nemesis is Mary Midgley, the agnostic professor of philosophy at Newcastle on Tyne who is now retired and in her mid-90s, although she's still there, 
But a few years ago, when she was holding forth against Richard Dawkins, she said, this is just preaching. You're just preaching. And he got so mad. She really got his goat, thank God. It was very pleasant to watch, actually. And uh, he was so enraged at his authoritarianism and his, you know, uh, what should I call it, dogmatic authority as a scientist being rejected and being accused of preaching, and then her also publishing books such as, uh, with titles such as Science as Salvation and Evolution as a Religion, uh, that uh, it really deflates the, the whole case of uh, such people. Now, that is on the one hand. All of that is about the new atheism. And I dealt with how I think the Muslims might respond to that. Going to the other half of the question about the uh, uh, idea that the Prophet Muhammad never existed, which is borrowed immediately from the similar idea that Jesus Christ never existed, which was already being used against Christianity well over a century ago. In the 19th century, the idea that Jesus Christ was a purely legendary figure who had no historical basis whatsoever was brought out. And I think the historical consensus that eventually emerged was, no, Jesus Christ is actually a historical figure, even though a lot of the material about him in the Gospels is legendary. So that that was kind of the place that academia went to eventually, and the idea that Christ didn't exist became somewhat disreputable. But one has to own that in history there is an extreme materialist school which demands that there should be contemporary material proof of everything. And beyond that, there is an even worse school, which is the postmodernist school represented by the famous or infamous Hayden White, who wrote the uh, book Meta History and another book, The Tropics of Discourse, and so on, which asserted that nothing whatsoever could be known about the past though he had to eventually own up that the Holocaust really happened when he was challenged on that particular point. Well, Holocaust, that's only 1941 to 1945, so it doesn't say anything about the really distant past. And some postmodernists have the idea that nothing whatsoever can be proven about the past. The question, though, the idea that the uh, so that could be even in that question. He said, how can we prove that the Prophet Muhammad existed? Well, you can't prove anything like that to the uh, uh, postmodernist followers of Hayden White because he doesn't even agree that the 19th century existed, let alone anything before that. I mean, they, they won't agree that anything whatsoever can be known about it, even in an age when photographs and so on exist. They wouldn't even admit that. So there is an epistemological problem about all of history, but the uh, history of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a, uh, a, 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 a quite a distant history and one that is um, in a, located in an era that was quite historically murky. And so there are a lot of historical problems dealing with that. And I think for myself, as a historian, the proof is sufficient in that it is found in multiple witnesses and multiple sources that the Prophet Muhammad existed. And that uh, if it is alleged that we can't trust the Muslim tradition about the Prophet Muhammad, well, the Prophet Muhammad is already mentioned, for example, in Doctrina uh, Jacobi Nuper Baptizati, a Greek uh, uh, anti-Jewish text that was written in apparently 634, two years after Prophet Muhammad had died. It, his existence is attested in that, albeit not by the name. He's existed in the Armenian historian Pseudo-Sibios as early as 660. And so we have uh, certainly some early testimonies to the existence of the Prophet Muhammad that come from the other side. And the book that is very authoritative about this is um, Islam as others saw it um, by uh, Robert Hoyland, H-O-Y-L-A-N-D. That book, coming from a student of Patricia Crona of the ultra-skeptical school, because Patricia Crona also, of course, doubted the whole early history of Sira of the Prophet, 
really acknowledges that that position is untenable. The position that the Prophet Muhammad did not exist would mean you would have to join the legions of Hayden White and throw all ancient and medieval history in the wastebasket and not be able to talk about any of it because you would be denouncing the whole thing. You'd have to adopt that type of epistemological position. If, however, you have a historical epistemological position that acknowledges that uh, Julius Caesar and uh, Jesus Christ and the uh, Emperor Justinian and such well-documented people existed, you have to acknowledge the Prophet Muhammad existed also.